a respectable woman, and I do not consent to my photographic image being displayed on the cover of your glossy magazines for all to gawk out. No! No tataratsi around here. I will not allow you to use my likenesses to say our tainted toothpaste, or your latest bad diets. Flash photography is not welcome here. Now that you know that I am not a woman to be trifled with, I shall bid you good day.
Welsh, Bounty Spiker, could we all please just for once go to the seaside on the bus? It isn't far, and I feel so hot and awful lonely. Why, you lazy, good for nothing birds! Beat him! I certainly will! I shall beat you later on in the day when I don't feel so hot. And now get out of my sight, you disgusting little worm, and give me some peace. It was at this point in our story, where the first, rather peculiar thing, happened to James. Come closer to me, little boy. Come right close to me, and I will show you something wonderful. You see this, my dear? Know what's inside this little bag? and the rest of the world put together. But what are they? Where did they come from? Aha! You would never guess that. Crocodile tongues. One thousand long, slimy crocodile tongues boiled up in the skull of a dead witch for twenty days and nights with the eyeballs. Ha! Fingers of a young monkey. The gizzard of a pig. And the beak of a green parrot. The juice of a porcupine. And three stone balls of sugar. Do for another week to let the moon do the rest. Here, take it. It's yours. Now, all you've got to do is this. Take a large jug of water and pour all these little green things into it. And then one by one add ten head, noon head. That sets them off. Soon enough the water will begin to froth and bubble furiously. When that happens, you must drink it all down. The whole jug full. One gulp. And then, my dear, you will begin to feel churning and boiling your stomach. And steam will start coming. And marvelous things will start happening to you. Wonderful, unbelievable things. And you will never be miserable again. Because you are miserable, aren't you? Oh, you need to tell me I know all about it. Now off you go and do exactly as I say. Now, so don't let any of these little green things get away from you. Because if they do, they shall be working their magic upon somebody else rather than upon you. Whoever they meet first, be it buggy, insect, and monastery, that is who will get the full extent of that magic. So hold the bag tight, and off you go. Do that as I say. Don't wait. Now is the time. Hey. Oh no! What am I going to do? I I suppose I'm just trying to pick them up. Why? Why they're burrowing into the ground? I I can't seem to get them. I can't get them. They're gone. They're all gone. But where have they gone to? There's something down there. It's the roots of a peach tree. Lots of centipedes. And other kinds of insects. Get back! What you, you lazy little beast! Get back over there immediately and finish shutting up those logs! Why don't we just lower the boy down the well in the bucket and leave him there for the night? They don't sleep so not to laze around like this the whole day long. That's a very good idea, my dear Sponge. But let's make him finish shutting up the wood first. Be up with what you want to be his brat and do some work. Before my very eyes! 
what a meal. It's ripe, it's just perfect. Now see here, Spiker, why don't we give the dishes shovel right away and make it a great big hunk of it for you and me to eat? No, not yet. But I can't wait to eat some. My dear sponge, there's a pile of money to be made of this only oh, hand to try it. You wait and see.
don't bother to count them. And there's nothing marvelous, you know, said to Pete, about having a lot of legs. Poor Earthworm, he's blind, you know. He can't see how splendid I look. In my opinion, the truly marvelous thing is to have no legs at all and to be able to walk just the same. You call that walking? You're a slither. That's all you are. You're just slither along. I cry. You are a slimy beast. I'm not a slimy beast. I'm a useful and much loved creature. Ask any gardener you like. And as for you, I am a pest. <sighs> He's so proud of that. Although for the life of me, I cannot understand why. Oh, um, please excuse me. I'm Lady Book. Please to me. I am the only pest in this room. Unless you kill old green grasshopper over there. But he's too old to be a pest anymore. Just better. I am a grasshopper who is quite old, but not a pest. I am a musician. Well said, old green grasshopper. In case you haven't guessed by now, my name is Spicer. James. It is James, isn't it? Yes. Well, James, have you ever been like to such a marvelous, colossal centipede as me? I certainly haven't. How did that have to be like that? Very peculiar. Very peculiar indeed. I was messing about in the garden under the old pea tree, and suddenly a funny little green thing came wriggling past my nose. <clears throat> but I know what that was. It happened to me too. And me. Suddenly there were little green things everywhere. Your soil was full of them. I actually swallowed one. So did I. I swallowed three. But well, who's telling the story anyway? Don't interrupt. <clears throat> Not now, Centipede. Um, why don't you get to talk and get started? What's going on? Well, in case you don't know it, James, we are about to do parts from the very top of this ghastly hill that we've been living on for so long. We are about to run away inside this big, beautiful beach to an island of, um, um, well, I'm of... Of what? Never you mind. But nothing can be worse than this desolate hilltop and those two repulsive arts of yours. Here, here. here. Well, in case you haven't noticed, this whole garden, even before it reaches the deep of the hill, happens to be on a steep slope. And therefore, the only thing that's been given this beautiful beach from Roller Boy right from the beginning has been the thick stem attaching it to the tree. Break off the stem and away we go. I've done it. We're off. The journey begins. And who knows where it will end. If you have anything to do with it, it can only mean trouble. Oh, nonsense, Earthworm. We're about to visit the most wonderful places and see the most marvelous things. <gasps> Isn't that right, Centipede? There's no knowing what we shall see. <laughs> Boy, last night. You know, we just 
go down on the dock and break his leg. Or his neck, maybe. <laughs> Oh, 
already yet. What absolute nonsense! Nothing is ever alright in the end, and you well know it. Poor old girl. She likes to turn everything into a disaster. She hates to be happy. If this speech is not going to sing, and if we're not going to all be drowned, then we're all going to starve to death instead. Hi, Dolly. He's right. For once, he's right. Of course, I'm always right. We shall get thinner and thinner and thirstier and thirstier. I am dying already. I am slowly shriveling up for the want of food. Firstly, I would rather drown. But you must be blind. How cruel. You know very well that I am blind. There's no need to rub it in. I, I'm sorry. I didn't mean it like that. But can't you see? See? How am I supposed to see if I'm blind?
a way to get us out of this, right? Yeah, Jane. Come on. There must be something we can do. There is something I believe in my tribe. I'm not sure to work, but tell us. Tell us quickly. Yeah, we'll try anything. But hurry, hurry, hurry. It's quiet, be quiet. Let the boys speak. Go on, James. It's go no on. No no
stands an astonished captain, standing with a group of his officers, all of them gaping at the great round object hovering overhead. I don't like it, nor do I, Sam. Do you think it's following us? I tell you, I don't like it. It could be dangerous. That's it. It's a secret weapon. Holy cat, send a message to the Queen of once. The country must be warned. And give me my telescope. There are birds everywhere. The whole sky is teeming with birds. Wait, wait a minute. There are people on it. And a, a, do I have this darn thing of this problem? <laughs> and a little boy in short trousers. Now just a minute, Captain. Yes, I distinctly see a little boy in short trousers standing up there. Captain, Captain, please. And an enormous whiskey one. Oh dear, the captain put the whiskey there. And an enormous, a simply enormous centipede. Call the ship doctor, the captain is not well. Get help, quickly. But look, it says me behind those thick clouds. No one ever see again. Never mind that. The captain is put his in his pocket cork. I'm the captain now. Take him below. He's sick, 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 sick. <laughs> I wonder where we'll finish up this time.
Henry Schroeter and his companions are all close together to keep warm. Oh, do they know what still has ahead of them? Oh dear, it scares even me. To get on with the story, there is not a sound anywhere. Listen to how quiet it is. The giant peach is swaying gently from side to side. Quiet. Not roaring through the sky like airplanes, driving whatever is lurking, the great cloud rampants back into the cover of the clouds. That is why people who travel in airplanes never see anything at all. But the peach. Oh, yes. The peach makes no noise whatsoever, as it floats Wait. Shh. Shh. Come up. There. Over there. Do you see them? I think I should have those about to. Any second now.
Beach is now viewed upon as a celebrity. Especially James. They're all brought down in five minutes and escorted to the steps of City Hall, where the mayor of New York made a speech of welcome. Well, that was happening. One hundred steeplejacks swarmed up to the top of the Empire State Building and lifted the giant peach onto the ground. The mayor thought there just had to be a parade for these wonderful visitors. And so, the procession was formed, and the leading car sat James and all of his friends. The crowd went wild with excitement. They cheered, they clapped, they screamed, they threw bits of white paper for James and his friends to sign, although none of them did get off autographed. Don't get your hopes up. And then, a rather curious thing happened. A little girl ran out from the crowd and yelled, Oh, James, James, could I please just have one tiny bite of a marvelous giant peach? And James shouted back, Help yourself, it won't keep forever anyway. And thus, that was the beginning of the end for our splendid giant peach. Children swarmed from everywhere, from every nook and cranny they came, and swarmed the giant peach like ants, till there was nothing left but the big brown peach cake. And thus, our journey ended. But our travels in the dark. The centipede became vice president in charge of sales of a high-class boot and shoe manufacturer. <laughs> the earthworm, with her lovely pink skin, was employed by women's face creams to do commercials for television. Spider, after she'd been taught to make nylon thread instead of silk, set the factory where she made typos for typo walk. The glowworm became the light inside the Statue of Liberty, thus saving a grateful city from having to pay a huge electricity bill every year. And the old green grasshopper joined the New York Symphony Orchestra, where his playing was greatly appreciated. And the ladybug, who had always had the fear all her life of her house burning down and her children all passing away, married the head of the fire department and lived happily ever after. <laughs> and the giant peach pit was made permanent part of Central Park. It was not only a famous monument, though, but it was also a famous house. Inside that famous house lived the famous person, a celebrity, if you will, James Henry Trotter himself, where on almost any day of the week, you could go up and knock upon the door, and James would always answer it. And you could ask him to tell and tell again the stories of his adventures on the magnificent giant beach. One day, James thought it would be rather nice if he sat down wrote it all as a book for everyone to read. And that, my dear friends, is what you've just seen.
Um, uh, um, so I do not know technical terms. I'm really, really bad um, when, it, when it comes to set design. Um, so we have a set designer, Amy Garcia, who designed, uh, designed our set and, um, and built it. And a lot of it is foam. It's that insulation foam. Um, and then uh, really thin, what? what? It's really, it's like a thin veneer of wood. So everything has to be made really, really light because we're touring with it. So, um, you know, and our youngest cast member is what, Emma? How old are you? I'm nine. She's nine. <laughs> so I said everything has to be, I, I want a nine-year-old to be able to lift this stuff, right? So, so she used extra light materials for everything.
our Amber out there. Yep. So, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so Ms. Amber, I have a question for Ms. Amber design on the side. Um, maybe yes. Sometimes. <laughs> We're a little, I'm a little booked right now. Um, my small business is a character entertainment company. I used to work at Disney World. And so um, we're um, real booked with Encanto and all that lovely friends. So. <laughs> I've never had any words. 